Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good we greet morning. you in the name of our precious Lord, Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. The one who sits high and looks low. Yeah. The one who cares for us daily. We ought to say thank you this morning because he's been mighty good to us. Amen. Amen. We're going to open up our, our service this morning with the reading of our... What is that? Spiritual vitamin for the year. Amen? Amen. And it's found in James, the book of James, chapter 1, verse 22. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 22. And it reads, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Amen. Amen. Let's repeat that again. Amen. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could heal all our soul diseases. Singing, no, not one. No, not one. You know Jesus. Knows all about our struggles. He will guide us till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus singing. No, not one. No, not one. You know Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide us till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus singing. No, not one. No, not one. have the reading of the scripture. Amen. Digga Shirley is very excited today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> She's exercising her gift. Amen. It ain't nothing wrong with it. Amen. But we're going to do it in Jesus' the end in order. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. I'll be reading, um, uh, let me see here, Psalm 24. Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's mm -hmm. and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. 
Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is ha, the king of glory. Selah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, as your children. We've sinned and fell short of your glory. Oh, after all, you kept us all week long. We've sinned in word, deed, or thought. And God, we ask you to please right now forgive us and try yes, us again. That we'll get it right in your sight, God. Because we aim to please you. We want our Father to please us. Thank we you, thank God. you, Lord God, for all the things that you've done for us and how you're carrying us through everyday <clears throat> life situations. And you're keeping us and bringing us back home. Long as we take care of your business, you'll take care of ours. Mm -hmm. And we truly say thank you because thank you, it Lord. is the work of the ministry. And thank so, you, Lord, Lord God, you know whatever's going on with us in our lives, you already know about mm -hmm. it. They're all Job situations. And so, God, we truly say thank, thank you, Lord, you, for God. allowing us because we could have been gone this morning. But, God, you allowed us to reach this destination safely mm -hmm. and put our feet on holy ground. So we truly say thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you for the rich word on today, Lord, thank God. You, Lord God. Anoint your servant from on high, Lord thank God, you, that you speak through him, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you'll speak through him, God. We thank you, Lord God, and we will be doers of that word that you give us on today. Yes, Lord Touching God. other people's <clears throat> lives with your word, God. We truly say thank you. Thank I know you, in our voices, Lord, yes, God, Lord God, that you get the glory <laughs> because we're not here for show, form, or yeah. fashion, but we're here to uplift the name Hallelujah, of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Drawing us even so closer because you've already known what is ahead of us. And so, Lord God, we thank you that thank you're preparing you, us today for those tasks. Mm -hmm. And truly, we say thank you. Thank you for thank our you, musicians, Lord. God. We thank, thank you for our trustees. We thank you for Jesus. our overseers. Thank you. We thank you for our pastors. We thank you for our members. Thank you, we Jesus. thank you for the diligence <coughs> we brought, God, because I hear every day that churches aren't mm -hmm. still open. And a question was given to me today. You still got to wear masks? And it's all over. And I said, we still following the guidelines. <laughs> so, God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. You're already protecting your children mm -hmm. as we go forth in you. For we give you all glory, <clears throat> honor, and praise on this day, who we shall serve. Amen. 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 This morning when I rose, Lord, I, I didn't have, have no doubt. doubt. This morning when I got out of my bed, I, I didn't have, have no doubt. doubt. This morning when I rose, Lord, I didn't have no doubt. doubt. He's 
I get joy. I got joy in my soul. Yeah, Jesus. God is in control. I got Satan's on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. Yeah. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. This means war. This means. This means war. This means. This means war. I got joy in my soul. God is in control. Right. I got Satan's on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. This means. This means war. This means. This means war. This means. This means war. Oh.
this means war. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. He's been good. He's been better than good to us than we've been to ourselves. Amen. 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 Praise team. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. I'm just going to stay right here. Amen. So good to see each and every one of you here this morning. Thank you, Facebook, for joining us here at Love Alive Ministries, where the love of Jesus is truly alive. Amen. 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 We're going to give ourselves a little moment to breathe. Hallelujah. Maybe to get a sip of water. Because the fire is sure burning up in here this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but I came to lift up the name of Jesus. Um, God is so good. God is so good. And I can't wait until after service to share in case pastor say, you know, he wants us to testify. We were here yesterday and I, I went home and I was just sitting there, me and my Nipsey, my little puppy. And I was reading my emails, and you guys know that I'm coming to the end of a thing in, uh, in my employment situation, right? And still haven't really landed yet, but there are some offers there. Amen? It's good when you live in a life that you can choose what's best, but it's even better when you ask the Lord to choose it for you, because it won't return boy you know it, it once God give it to you he ain't gonna take it back amen and I'm, I'm at an age in the stage in my life it's just I just want to keep moving forward I don't want to keep going through this again so Lord it's your turn you choose right so anyway I was reading my emails two weeks ago I entered into uh, an arrangement on my BG and E bill set up a pa payment plan right so I'm I read my email and it said BGE &E, um, COVID relief grant. I was like, what is this about? Do you know the Lord blessed me with a grant that I didn't even apply for? Do y'all know that the grant was over a thousand dollars? Glory! <laughs> Nobody does it like Jesus. Nobody does it like Jesus. But I thank God his word tells me every day to just trust him and to have faith. His word daily reminds me, look, daughter, I've already gone before the situation. You know, I, I rest in me. Rest in me. Praise me. Worship me. Fellowship with me. Commune with me. Oh, I tell you, I feel good today. Hallelujah. Because it was like, man, I made this payment arrangement. Things are starting to dwindle down. How am I going to even honor this payment arrangement come the date that is due? He, he wiped it clean, y'all. Did you hear me? <laughs> and I didn't even apply for it. But thank God I was in the position of faith. <laughs> and a position of trust to receive it. Amen? Because I'm trusting him. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to move right along. And this is the time where we're going to have uh, Sister Karen. This Karen. Come on down so we can greet our visitors. Amen. Come on down, Sister Karen. Come on down, buddy. Come on down. Sister Valerie, okay, middle name coming Karen, all right. <laughs> Sorry, on behalf of Love Alive Ministries, our pastor Gordon L. Wright Jr., and his beautiful wife, and our overs, see, I can say it all, our overseer, I should speak right there, and of course, Brother Felicia, we want to welcome our visitors today. We thank you for coming. Please come again. And as our 
often as we can and we do every Sunday. We just take this moment to greet our visitors and each member with a holy hug. And before you get up to move around, just some housekeeping rules. Some of you may be fully vaccinated, have vaccinated or not, but we will keep the mask on. Keep your mask on while you're inside the church. Amen? Thank you.
Amen, amen. How you feeling? How you feeling? Tell the truth. How you really feeling? It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? I pray that those hugs that were generated were received and reciprocated. Amen? Because we never know how a person is feeling when they get inside of the house of the Lord. Amen? Truly thank God that he didn't make any mistake when he named this church Love Alive Ministries. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. We thank you now that you're back at your seats. We're going to move on in the service. And it's time for tithes and offering. Hallelujah. We have several ways of giving. We have Cash App. Dollar Sign Land Baltimore, Give a Fly, and you can always mail your tithes and offering uh, to the church. Amen? Amen? So we ask that uh, you get your heart right, if your heart is right, then your giving will be right. Amen? Because the, God, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And let's give our musicians a hand praise. It is so refreshing. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I want to thank Trustee Agnes for that prayer. Amen. And I want to thank each and every, we want to thank each and every one of you for your cheerful giving. Amen. 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 How many of you are here today to receive the word of God and apply it to your life today? Amen. If you're like me, I, I, I suggest you stand up on your feet. And give the Lord a hand praise and say, Lord, I'm receiving it. I'm ready to receive it today. Amen. 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 We're going
going to have an A selection from our praise team. Let's give our praise team a hand praise. Amen. And then the next voice that you will hear will be none other than our pastor, Reverend Dr. Gordon S. Wright, Jr. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We know that God is a good God. Amen. Yes, he is. Amen. And God is our provider. God is our shepherd. He is always there for us. And because yes. of that, we know that we can depend on him. Amen? Amen. We know that we can trust in him because he is so good. Amen. Yes, and he, he you know, as we remember the Psalms, we can just sing praises to him mm -hmm. for his glory and for all his mm -hmm. greatness yes. and all he has done. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me, defender behind me, defender behind me, I won't fear, I won't fear, I'm filled with anointing, I'm filled with anointing, my cup's overflow. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. I won't fear. I won't fear. I
as we stand all over the building, amen, we need to pray. I received um, word that I'm not sure whose daughter it is, but I know it's family to Brother Devon and Sister Chanel. Um, her name is Harmony Ball Stribling. It's one of their daughters uh, passed, and her services were this weekend. So we know that when people go on and they leave, we have all sorts of emotions. And we thank the Lord for being able to teach us how to mourn. Amen. How to mourn. So we're going to pray. Right now, Father, we come before you to say thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the life of Harmony Ball Stribbling, Father. We ask that you comfort the family. Allow them to accept, to accept, to accept your love that never fails. It never changes. It's wonderful. Allow them to accept your peace that far exceeds our understanding. That even in this, someone will get the glory and cry out, what must I do to be saved? For after all, it's about being saved so that we can have a home to go to to be with you. So we thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be able to pray for this family. And we thank you for comforting them right now. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, love alive. Good morning. We're going to be coming out of Luke chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. And when you get it, stand on your feet again. Luke 3, 4 through 6. We thank the Lord for the heat that we've been receiving these past few days. Amen. Y'all didn't seem too thankful. I'm thankful because I can feel it. Amen. I'm just glad to be able to feel it. And he maketh a way that I can escape it too. Amen. I'm glad about that. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about that. Luke 3, 4 through 6. And it reads, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough way shall be made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come before you. We thank you for doing all things well. We thank you for Jesus. Now, Father, we ask that you hide us behind that old rugged cross that people will not concentrate on me, but hear the word. Allow the Holy Spirit to apply it in their life to be better. We thank you for all things. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And for a topic, we're going to use, where are you? Where are you? The mountaintop, the mountaintop, the mountaintop. That's the place of victory and restoration. Amen. God took Moses up high to meet with him. Gave him the Ten Commandments on the mountain. Amen. It's a place where change happens on the mountaintop. How much change? God said, Moses, I can't allow you to see me, but I'm going to let you just see my glory as it passes by. I'm going to let you feel it, but I got to hide you. God passed by Moses, and Moses felt his glory, and when he came down from the mountain, the people were afraid. Because Moses had changed, amen? You can't see God and remain the same. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Moses had changed. God allowed Moses to go up to the mountaintop to see the promised land, amen? Moses couldn't go over to the promised land, but because God loved him so much, he said, come on up and let me show you what, it, what you've done, what I got for the people. 
the mountain top, the mountain top, the mountain top. Modern day, most of y'all remember that speech. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Given by Martin Luther King Jr. Amen. He said, it don't matter what happens now. The Lord has taken me to the mountaintop. And he has allowed me to see over into our victory. Amen. He said, I don't know when it's going to happen, but I can tell you it's going to happen. We're going to get there as a people. It is the mountaintop that we seek to get to. It's the mountaintop that we seek to live in because it's our restoration. It's our victory. But I got to tell you, it's what we seek. It's where we want to be all the time. But can I tell you that we live in the valley. That valley, that valley, it's a landmass located between mountains or hills. Amen. The valley sits low. From the valley, you can look up and see the mountain. Oftentimes, when you look up from the valley, the mountains don't seem easily accessible. It is in the mountain top that we yearn to live, but we're in the valley. Valley has everything we need for our life to be sustained, but it is also a place of warfare. In the valley, there's a war going on between light and darkness, righteousness and sin. It's in the valley that this takes place, amen? And the valley is where we live, so we live amongst some warfare. And what I learned is that in most wars, you seek the high ground. Amen? He who has the high ground will win. Is that what they say, Brother Daniel? Because you can shoot down into the valley. But God has made us able to live in the valley. He has equipped us that we can exist and overcome in the valley. See, it was a battle that went on in the valley, the valley of Ella. There was this giant. He was a Philistine. His name was Goliath. And the Philistine nation in Israel made a pact. We don't need everybody to die. You send out one, we'll send out one. Whoever wins will take over. And in the valley, things usually look small in the valley. But this man, Goliath, looked huge in the valley. So you can imagine how much more he looked on top of him, right, in person. He was a giant. And Israel was afraid of the giant. You know the story, David. The shepherd boy was coming into being as prophesied, and he said, I'll go into the valley to fight Goliath. Now, I don't know if you caught David's words, what he said to Goliath. What he said to him was, you came to fight me, but you're not fighting me. You're fighting the Lord God Almighty. This is what David spoke as a boy. I want you to hold on to that. As a boy, he spoke, I am not alone in this valley. I am not alone in this fight. I've just got to go. This battle is not mine. I'm just his tool. It's the Lord. David slew Goliath in the valley. David knew something that none of the Israelites knew. 
he knew that to go into the valley, he would not be alone. That the Lord God Almighty was with him in the valley. Y'all remember the other valley? There was this man named Gideon. Amen. Ah, Gideon. Thank the Lord for Gideon. Gideon took an army into the valley. And the Lord said, I need to repurpose your army. In other words, I need to downsize your army. You got too many people, Gideon, with all these people. They'll think that they would have won the battle. They'll forget to give me the glory. So it was in the valley of Jezreel that God said, Gideon, you've got too many people. Let me narrow down your numbers. So he streamlined him down to 300 people. And even today, forget yesterday, we would say 300 people. That's just not enough. But God said that is more than enough. He met with Gideon in the valley. Surely you can hear the difference between the mountaintop and the valley. Amen. If I was to give you a song, which I won't. Some of y'all know that song by the Supremes. Amen. Some of y'all know that. I don't want y'all to think I listen to Motown every day. Amen. And all day. But when you look at it, it looks like the mountaintop and the valley is a case of the haves and the have-nots. Amen? We won't talk about that either. Amen. Mountaintop, everything is great. And the valley, there's problems in the valley. And I want to know, where are you today? Well, here we have God brings John. Who's John? John is Jesus' cousin. Amen. Elizabeth's son. And he's from the wilderness. John is what they say is a wild man. Amen. Living in the wilderness, looking half crazy, beard and everything. That's John. And he is the forerunner for Jesus. But you know, we learned a lot in Bible study, Sister Cassandra. Can I share with you that we learned that there are things that happen in the wilderness. Amen? And one of the things we learned that happens in the wilderness is that revelation and discovery occurs in the wilderness. Amen? We learned that you learn about yourself. Amen? In the wilderness. The other thing we learned is that while you're learning about yourself in the wilderness, provision and preparation is being made for you while you are in the wilderness. Amen. Know what else we learned? That transition and new beginnings occur when you are in the wilderness. Yes, yes, John was in the wilderness. And here's the last thing we learned that's most important. Everybody gets a wilderness experience. Amen. Oh, it's important to come to Bible study. I can move quicker when you come to Bible study. Amen. Everybody gets a wilderness experience. Even this man named Jesus got a wilderness experience. What are you talking about, Pastor? Y'all remember after Jesus was baptized? Into the wilderness. Did you hear what Overseer said? He was driven, pushed, sent into the wilderness. And what happened when he got into the wilderness? Satan came to the wilderness. And what was Satan coming to do? To tempt the untemptable. Think about that. He was coming to tempt the one that he could not tempt. So if he's going to tempt Jesus, what do you think Satan is going to do to you? He's going to attempt to tempt us. Ah, everybody gets a wilderness experience. John, being obedient to the Lord, comes out of the wilderness for his new mission. And what is his new mission? He's preaching repentance for your sins. And 
the Messiah, the Savior, is at hand. And I'm glad that John preached repentance because sometimes I feel like some of y'all think I preach too much about sin and how sin can kill you. But I want to be like John. I'm going to keep preaching how sin can kill you until we see some repentance and more righteousness and love. Sin will kill you. John is preaching. John is fulfilling the prophecy. What prophecy? Got some homework for you. Isaiah 40, verses 3 through 5. Isaiah 40, verses 3 through 5. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 5. You read it. Some of y'all have really good memories, I see. Amen. Isaiah 53, you read it. I want you to see the prophecy that John is preaching. Meaning, John is not in the Old Testament, but he is fulfilling the Old Testament. Amen. Look at what John is saying in Isaiah 40, verses 3 through 5, in Isaiah chapter 53, amen? Mountaintop, Lord, how can I stay up on the mountaintop? Your word says that you're going to bring it low. How can I get to the mountaintop? Well, I appreciate you bringing it low. That means I don't have to worry about climbing so high. You're going to bring it where I can receive it and achieve it. Did you know the mountaintop is not just where you are physically, but where you are mentally? Amen? Jesus died that we may live on the mountaintop. Oh, yes. John, we're going to stay in John. John 10.10. 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now, can I tell you, the more abundantly is when you're going to transition. But life means you enjoying right now, in the present. You're not waiting to transition. He said, I came that you might have life right now for the living, continuous, forever. You got it when you get me. He said that you might have life. The valley, that valley that's been filled in. Some say, I feel so low. I feel least of all. He said, no, I'm filling it in. No, you're not stuck in a valley. I'm bringing the valley up. And we know that Jesus does this because he said he has overcome. What has he overcome? He's overcome it all, everything. John 16, 32 and 33. I told you we're going to stick with John a bit. Behold, the hour cometh. Yea, is now come that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Now, I want to pause there for a minute. Amen? Jesus said, you won't be around me, but the Father will be with me. Now, listen to what else Jesus said. I've got to leave so that when I'm not around you, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, will be with you. So all the rest of your life, when you accept me, never, never alone. Even when it seems like no one is around. God, the Holy Spirit, is with you. Amen? Verse 33, these things I have spoken to you, that in me ye might have peace. 
and the world. This is where we live. Ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We don't always understand what is happening in the world. But one thing we got to know is that he overcame. So we overcome because he overcame. Amen. Because of what he did, we live. We live in him because of who he is. I told you, David, when he was in the valley fighting Goliath, he told Goliath as a boy, you came to fight me, but you're not fighting me. You're fighting the Lord God Almighty. David said something as a man. Y'all might have heard it. Yea, though I walk through the valley, not run, but straight right through the valley and the shadow of death, I shall not. not alone. David acknowledged it as a young man. He acknowledged it as a boy that in this Valerie experience, I'm never alone. I'm never alone. No matter where I am, your presence makes it right. Your presence makes it right. And I want you to understand that because some of y'all will say, well, the valley looked the same to me. It may look the same, but it ain't the same because his presence changes your valley that you were in. Amen? So it is not the same because his presence changes it. And when you acknowledge his presence, you begin to change the valley by your faith. Oh yes, you have a role to play. You got to believe. You got to believe. You got to believe that it can be changed. And it really can. It's not a hard stretch to believe that either because it can be changed. But you got to believe it. That don't seem right. Well, how about when Jesus was dying on the cross? There were two other people beside him, amen? One was a malefactor who said, Father, Jesus, forgive me. Help me. I'm wrong. He came. He repented. And what did Jesus tell him? He didn't say, well, after we die, you're going to be with me in paradise. After I rise, you'll be. No, Jesus said today, right now, you shall be with me in paradise. I know you feel like you're dying, but I'm telling you, you're about to live. Today, 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 today. So I want you to understand that in this valley experience you may be walking through, Today is the day for your valley to be changed. Why? Because he's right there with you. What did David say? I was young, but now I'm old. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. And can't you see that in the scriptures? Even when David was young, he recognized that the Lord was with him in the valley. When David got older and things didn't go as planned and 
he was coming up and just following the Lord's will and Saul was coming against him, he still realized that in this valley, I'm not alone, so I can't touch the Lord's anointed. That's not for me to do. I just got to be obedient to his will. Valley. Valley. Jesus came that that valley can come up. Then he said, I came because I'm straight. I came because I want to make you straight. I came so that you could have a straight path to the Father. Hallelujah. I don't know. I learned a long time ago that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Amen. Jesus said, I am the last sacrifice. You don't have to buy any more birds and gather wood and burn them. I am the last sacrifice. I am the way. I am the truth. You just got to believe. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. L-I-F-E, life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Only one way. Don't want you to get confused. It's just one way that you can get to the Father. You can't be good enough. You can't be sweet enough. You can't be loving enough. You can't give away enough money. You can't. You just ain't that. Hey, there's only one way. You've got to come through me. You've got to accept that I came and I died a brutal death to win you back. You've got to accept that. You've got to believe that. And then you've got to live it. How do you live it? Stop crucifying me over and over again. Live for me. Be righteous. Where are you? He made the road straight. He died to pay for our sins. Our sins paid wages of death. Amen. But I'm asking, where are you in your life? Some of you may be thinking you are on top of the mountain, but your definition of the mountain is all wrong. It's all wrong. Your mental perspective of the mountain is all wrong. Some of you think that the mountain, because you are up today or everything is going your way, that everything is great. And the opposite is some of you may feel like I'm in the valley. Life has been rough to me. I'm sick most of the days. Maybe this is all I have to look. And I'm telling you, you're not thinking right. Because what Jesus said is that I've come that it don't matter what you think. It matters who I am and who you know that I am. You've got to know who I am. It don't matter what your family name is. Isn't that good? It don't matter that you might not have hair as nice as me. Amen? The older I get, the nicer my hair gets as it runs off my head. Amen? Soon it'll just be one string and it'll be so beautiful. Amen? It don't matter. It don't matter if you light. It don't matter if you're dark. It don't matter. It don't matter if you're rich. It don't matter if you're poor. He said none of that matters. What really matters is have you accepted me as your personal savior? Have you acknowledged that you are a sinner that you need a savior? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? are you? See, when you accept him as your personal savior, no matter whether you might be on what some call the mountaintop or in the valley, you are in the right place at the right time because you are not alone. 
And where the Lord is, that is paradise. Amen? You must accept him as your personal savior. Where are you? Are you saying, I accepted him, but I'm still living a life of sin? Then you haven't accepted him. You've got to change. I can't change overnight, but you can change your mind. You can say, I want to be better, and I'm going to live to be better. And when I mess up, I'm repenting quickly. I want to be like David. David wasn't perfect, not by any stretch of the imagination, but he loved the Lord. Why do we know he loved him? Because when David messed up, he came back and he repented. Where are you? Are you with him? Here's the question. Are you with him? Or are you by yourself? Where are you? And if you answered, I'm with him, amen. Then I got another question. Is he with you? Or are you by yourself? What are you saying? Is he with you? I'm saying, are you obedient to his will and his way? Are you committed to the life that he wants you to live? Oh, it's one thing to be saved. It's another thing to be committed. Amen. Then we learn about that, Deacon Chris. One thing to be saved, but it's another thing to be committed. Are you obeying his word, his will? Where? Are you? Well, I got good news. While you still have breath in your body, you can be with him. You can be committed. You can be obedient. You can love him even the more. You can build up on that relationship. Do it now. But the time is coming. And guess what? I don't know the time when your time is. I don't know when my time is. Amen. But I know when it comes, it's going to be the right time because he never makes a mistake. And when he comes, I don't want to be getting ready. I want to be ready. Amen. I want to be in the ready position, living out his will for my life. I don't want to be trying to figure out his will for my life. I want to be living it. Where are you? I thank God so much for repentance. I thank him for repentance. I love him for repentance. You know why? Because repentance gives me a chance to wash my hands and get right again. Thank you, Father, for repentance. Don't think that, well, I don't have anything to repent for. You're making a liar out of him. When you say that, that's what the word says. Amen. Where are you? I don't care who you are, what family you grew up in, your family name. But you need to be with Jesus. You need to know Jesus. You need to know him in a special way. You need a special relationship with him. It's time to stop coming close to Jesus and not getting all in. So many people are just walking up to the door and turning around and just touching the door and leaving instead of walking through the door to Jesus. Come to him now while you can. Change your life. Let him change it for you. Right now, accept that abundant life. Accept his will. Can life be tough sometimes? Absolutely. Life can make you cry. Life can make you sometimes think about feeling depressed. And we all know life sometimes can throw you a pity party like none other. Amen? Amen. You want to go to a pity party. Let some stuff happen to you in your life. Ooh, you don't even need to invite anybody. You can have that pity party going on all by yourself. Amen? But I keep coming back to the word 
where Jesus said, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. That means be happy, be encouraged, because despite all that you're going through, I've already overcome. And if you and me and I've overcome it, guess what? You overcome too. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior to pardon you from the penalty of your sin, which is death, now is the time. You need a Lord and you need to accept him as Savior. He's got to be priority one. Now is the time. Accept him right now. Come to Jesus while you can. He loved you when you were most unlovable. He loved you before you knew the true definition of love. Why don't you come to Jesus? Get out of where you are and get where he is. Come to Jesus right now. Is there one? You can come to Jesus right now. God, infinite in wisdom, the Father who loves us so wonderfully, he made it so that no matter what happens, we can come to Jesus where we are. Isn't that a wonderful thing? We don't have to go to any special building. We don't have to go to a water to get baptized. We can come to him right now where we are. Amen? Come to him first. You can be baptized. I encourage you to be baptized, but first of all, I want you to come to him earnestly and honestly. One thing we know, even without coming to the Lord, we know a lie. <laughs> oh yeah, we know about lying. Yes, we do. You ain't got to be saved to know about lying. Amen? We practice that. So you know if you have not come to him. I might not know. You may be able to fool me. But I don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. Don't fool yourself when the Lord knows all. Come to him right now. Come to Jesus. If you've come to him now, amen. We welcome you to the family. And we challenge you. We send you, we push you to a body of believers that are working out their soul salvation. And we say to you, come on home. We welcome you home to this body. Come on home this day. Why don't you come to Jesus? We don't fear him because of all that he's done, but we fear and respect him because of who he is. And he is who he said he is. Why don't you come to him right now? Heaven is a real, prepared place. Hell is a real and will be the prepared place. You got a choice this day. You can accept him or not. And I got good news. You don't have to die to receive the life. You receive it when you accept him. Life is for the living. Come to Jesus right now. Amen. It's prayer time as we stand up and we prepare. We reverence him. We love him. He's done so much for us. So many things, dangers we didn't even see. Somebody said, I just thank him for waking me up. 
because I realize that not just babies die instantly. We all can die instantly. But he spared me this day. So I'm going to reign in the day with him. Let us pray. Father, we come before you to say thank you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for blessing us. Help us to do your will. Help us to be more like you. Help us to be committed and obedient to your way. We love you, Lord. Forgive us for we have sinned. Help us to understand it doesn't matter where we are as long as you are with us. It's paradise. Today, 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 we thank you. Now, Father, we bless those who said I would come if I just had another chance. Tell them they have it right now. They can accept as long as their blood is still running warm in their body. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for what you are doing. But most of all, we thank you for who you are. Your omniscience. Your omnipotence. Your righteousness. Your holy. Your omnipresent. Your immutable. You are love. We thank you. Help us to be better with our relationship. Help us to get it right. Help us to understand that until we get our relationship right with you, our relationship with others is really not sufficient. It's in vain. It's not right. Only after we get it right with you can all things come into line. So we thank you, Father for giving us the opportunity. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for sealing us. You thank, we thank you for never being alone. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that even when it seems like all of our friends may walk away, that even at that time, the Holy Spirit is still there. We thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your peace. Oh, we thank you for your discipline. Help us to trust you even the more. Now help us to allow that Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and abide with us forevermore. Let the church say amen, amen, amen. Go in peace. Be blessed.